Hello and welcome everybody, Marcus Small here from thesmallman.com. Today I'm going to show you how you can trap dynamic ranges, both vertical and horizontal, and we'll put them all together. So these are the, some of the most common methods. So we'll press Alt F11 to go into the Visual Basic Editor, and then we'll insert a module, insert a module. Okay, now we've got our module, we'll create a subroutine. We'll call it Dynamic Range. And then we're basically racing the cop. Now I'll show you the most common method. If I press Alt F11 to go back into the screen, if I choose any range inside of this tabular data set, I can pick any cell. What I want to do is I want to replicate this, this shortcut. Control Shift 8. That's the current region, yeah? That entire range. I want to replicate that. So if I press Alt F11, I choose a range inside that data set. A1's fine. It's in there. And then I just type dot current region. All right, current region. Now I've got to do something to it. So we can tell that the data has been manipulated in some way, shape, or form. So I press copy. Now if I press F8, F8, and F8, even if I go out of the code, if I press Alt F11, if we go back into the code, you can see there's a copy range that's dropped all the way around it. Yeah? And then, like, uh, you could literally paste the values over here or whatever. I could use the next piece of the code to say, okay, I want to put the data in 01. Let's check the veracity of that. So, copy, the destination is 01. Yeah? 01. So you can see in our data set, Alt F11, there's nothing out there. We'll go and run the procedure from start to finish, F8 to start it, F8 to execute, the executable line, F8, and F8 to end. And then if we Alt F11, you can see the data set has been repeated over there. Things have gone a little bit skewy because it's not formatted in the same way. Uh, if I wanted to get around that, I'll use like the second data set. Let's get around that. We'll just drop the data in. So if I do it on this sheet, 01, if you just want to uh, paste the values, it would be 01.paste special uh, Excel paste values. Yeah. All right. So if we run that on this particular sheet, Alt F11, let's make this a different color so we know it's a different sheet. And then Alt F11, we'll press F8, 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 and F8. And then we go back into that sheet and you can see now the data's uh, been dropped in there. You can see it hasn't caused the same issues. It's only the values, so the formatting won't have come through. Um, you could format it after the event. Now that's how to create a dynamic range. Let's copy that piece of code. Copy, paste it below, change the name from dynamic RNG to DYN RNG1, and then I'll show you another method. Yeah. Now we're going to use a variable. So I'm going to dim my last row as a long integer. Yeah. Now all I have to do is set the last row to something. Now this will be a description on how we get trap the vertical range yeah a vertical dynamic range so we'll say the last row is equal to and then we'll say okay i'll i'll show you a different method we'll go range open bracket a ampersand rows dot count rows dot count dot end and then we want to come upwards yeah this is the best method excel up yeah and then dot row yeah, and what that does is if I have a look, if I took this away and you don't see this, view locals window. If we have a look at the data set, Alt F11, if I'm taking this data set, I might use this one. Actually, uh, we will use this one. I'll take some rows out. Let's remove some of this. Delete. So the last row is 21. Yeah, and then I'll press Alt F11 to go back in the into the VBE editor, and we'll say F8, and we'll run, we're looking for 21. So when our variable gets assigned, it's got zero at the moment because we've started our procedure. When it gets assigned, what I wanna see is 21 flying into this area here. So I'll press F8, F8, there's my 21, yeah? So I've trapped the last row, 
Now, how would you go about trapping the last column? Let's copy that procedure. Let's paste it. And I'm going to flick between methods. So we'll create ALC. And the methods are whether I use the square bracket to, don't, to denote a hard-coded range or whether I go through the range method. Yeah, now, so I might use the square bracket this time. Now, in Excel, if we go Alt F11, the very last, I might just get rid of this data set, the very last cell in Excel, Control Shift Right, is XFD. Yeah, now that's important. So we'll go all the way out there and then we'll come back to here. So Alt F11, and that's our toggle. So the dim the last column as long, and we'll go last column, LC, and let me just buy a bit of real estate here so we can see. LC is equal to, uh, we might just, I might just go uh, square bracket, X, F, D, and then uh, I've got to choose the row. So XFD1, yeah? XFD1, that's like saying A1, but just for way, way, way out there, 16,000 rows. Uh, dot and XL, not up, it's XL to the left. We want to go left, yeah? And then it's not dot row, it's dot column. Now, when I click on the next line, you'll see that this gets capitalized. You should always write your code in lowercase. So when it gets, when you... Uh, enter, it gets capitalized, and then you know that the code has been entered uh, in the most part correctly, yeah? So it doesn't guarantee that you haven't made a mistake, it just tells you you're on the right track, yeah? So we'll press F8, compile error, uh, maybe I've got exactly the same name, yeah, I have, okay, we'll just change that name. So two, that's the only issue, you've got to have a unique name for each macro, yeah? F8, now you'll see it's worth zero, now, let's get the number that we're looking for. So Alt F11, M, 13th character in the alphabet. So we're looking for 13 to be populated right in here. So we'll watch this number in here. So we'll press F8, F8, oop, escape, F8, and F8. Yeah, and we see that uh, the number 13 pops there yeah so that's effectively worked really really nicely so that's our second method we've trapped the last row we've trapped the last column and then we can bring it together in the same way that we brought this together here in one procedure so we'll just copy this procedure we'll go down and oh, the first thing I'll do is change this which I forgot to do before. We've got the last column. We can copy the last row and it's variable, so we don't have to write it again. So now we've got the last row and the last column, and now we can trap the last row and the last column dynamically in a piece of code. So we say range, and then open a bracket, cells, open bracket. Now, it's the row, then the column index. So we say we want the, the first row, oh, the first row, comma, the first column, close bracket, comma, now we just repeat the cells, comma, now we use our variables, the last row, comma, the last column. So it's double bracket, and then we'll just do what I did the first time. We'll just dot copy here. Now, if I press F9, that gives us a breakpoint. I'll just stop the code. Stop, stop, stop. We just want a breakpoint. We know that the variables are all good. So I press F9. F9 is like a toggle. And then if I press F8, I don't want to go past it. F8, F8. We've got 13 and 21. Now, if I press F8, Alt F11, you'll see that it's copied the range, yeah? So that is how you bring both methods together. Trapping the last, trapping everything, using the current region, trapping the last row, the last column, 
and then when you bring the two together to get the dynamic range that you wish. All right, everyone, have a fantastic day.